This is one of the only battle-tested tanks in the world fitted with a gas turbine engine, which can also be called a jet engine. That's right, a jet engine inside a tank. Let us look at the interiors of the Abrams, the commander, and the gunner, and how they operate the fire control system. To engage the enemies explained in the basic step-by-step -step format in the video ahead. We will also be looking at this trophy countermeasure system, which engages in neutralizing any RPG or missiles fired at it. And not to forget the main armament, especially the multipurpose round, and how they work after being fired from this 120mm smoothbore gun. Oh yes, the unbiased pros and cons of this main battle tank. So stay tuned and don't miss a beat. This is the M60A3 Patton's built in the 1970s. It was the main reason the M1 Abrams line of tanks was built. This is the M1A1 tank in service with US Army in 1986. Moving to the sides is the M1A2, and this is the M1A2C. This mine clearing plow could also be fitted to both the version, which was one of the main demands in urban warfare. Interestingly, this is also similar to this Leopard 2 tanks, as they both came from this joint MBT program animated in our recent video. Anyways, enough history lessons, let's get straight to the basic engineering behind it. We will be looking at this M1A2C Abrams with Tusk. Its full form is Tank Urban Survivability Kit. This tank commands a length of 9.83 meters or 32 feet long. The width of this tank is at around 3.66 meters or 12 feet, while considering the Tusk 2 edition is around 4.34 meters or 14.2 feet. The height of this tank is around 2.95 meters or 9.7 feet. It has a combat weight of 61 tons, making it one of the heaviest tanks in the world, just behind this Arjun MBT. Let's compare this to a person to understand its size, even better compared with the German Leopard tank and the Russian T-90. The Russian T-90 was intentionally made to have a lower profile than our Western tanks, all at a cost of around $4 million. The Leopard was made at a cost of around $7 million. And top place goes to our American tank, the Abrams, at $8 to $10 million, with all the added features of Tank Urban Survivability Kit. It's pricey enough to manufacture these beauties, and we just keep building them, pouring money into wars, jacking up the national debt along the way. No wonder over half the Americans making over six figures live paycheck to paycheck. They're pouring hundreds of millions into assets that aren't necessarily correlated to the stock market. But hedge fund CEO Ken Griffin and his peers are just sitting on their hands, only putting their money in savings where inflation will sap it away. Because even if the stock market flatlines this year as they expect, these low correlation assets can continue to climb higher and higher. But how can we easily invest in low correlation assets? According to a recent report by Citibank, the asset with the lowest correlation to the stock market of any major asset class was contemporary art. That's right, contemporary art prices have more than doubled the S&P 500's total return over the last 26 years. Now this market used to be hard to get into, but Masterworks is the platform that lets you invest in multi-million dollar paintings without breaking the bank. Masterworks has built an impressive track record of 11 exits, all of them profitable. These numbers speak for themselves. Now, with those kinds of results, Masterworks has seen over 650,000 members try to gain access. So, there is a wait list. But I reached out to them to give you all VIP access to their latest offerings. To skip the waitlist, just check the description below. The Abrams has a crew of four, a commander sitting almost at the top center. To the left sits the gunner, just below the commander. Moving to the extreme right is the loader, and the last crew member is the driver. Let's start from the front. This is the 120mm smoothbore gun. Just beside it is the coaxial machine gun on the Abrams. Moving further, this is the counter sniper or anti-material mount that is mainly used by the gunner for any infantry attacks. This is the gunner's primary sight with the ballistic shield cover. Let's move further to the back. This is the 50 caliber machine gun to be operated remotely by the commander. 
Moving to the side, this is the Commander Independent Thermal Viewer. Let's move to the interior of the tank, where we will find the Commander Weapon Station. The main protruding object is the primary sight extension that makes sure that both the Commander and the Gunner are both on the same page. Moving to the side is the Commander Display Unit, while just below is the Imaging System. This is the Commander Control System that tracks the target with the panoramic 360-degree sights and moves just like the animation shown here. Using the panoramic sights, the commander tracks the target and sends the data to the gunner to fire the gun. Moving to the side is the Crow, or in full form, common remotely operated weapon station. This animation shows the commander can remotely operate the 50 caliber gun from inside the tank. Let's look at the gunner station. This is called Gunner Cadillacs. Specifically, the two black handles are the controls. The smaller red switch above is, of course, the trigger. Pressing that switch with both safeties disabled, this 120mm gun unleashes its firepower. Also to be noted, the gunner can use one set of switches on one side of the Cadillac if injured. This big switch, when pressed and held, the gunner can turn the turret just like the animation shown here. It could also elevate and depress the gun tube when both the switch are pressed and rotated. This is the result when viewed from outside the tank. If the gunner lets go of that switch, the gun will stop moving. This is the blow-off panel and it is programmed to eject the cover just like this when a round is hit. This is done to direct the explosion upwards instead towards the crew compartment. Let's go inside the tank and see how this works. This is how he opens the door. Put a knee on this switch here, and Pop slides the ammunition compartment door. It could carry different variants like Heat MPT, which is the main round, although it is not as accurate as the M829 series armor piercing, fin stabilized, discarding Sabo. Just for comparison, this is the size of the round to an average human. When fired, the round reaches the target and detonates creating a molten metal of hypersonic jet to destroy or penetrate around 600 millimeters of rolled homogeneous armor. This heat round has a range of 2600 meters or 1.6 miles. Comparing this to the fin stabilized armor piercing Sabo, it has a range of 3500 meters or 2.1 miles. Let's look at the major differences between the two. Modern armor-piercing fin-stabilized discarding Sabo is designed for one thing only to kill tanks. While this heat round is not very good against the main battle tank, but good for lightly armored vehicles. Let's see what happens when an armor-piercing fin-stabilized discarding Sabo round leaves the protective shells. This might penetrate right through the lightly armored vehicle and pass through them. In short, they have a logistic problem of carrying different rounds for different target, so, the Americans developed this multi-purpose round as a solution. The strategy is to replace all the rounds discussed above with just one round. The gunner could program three types of ammunition with this multi-purpose round. Number one is the air bust mode. This is used usually for infantry vehicles. Number two, point detonate is ideal for armored vehicles and trucks. Number three, point detonate with delay mode ideal for tanks and heavily armored vehicles. This is the countermeasure system, also called the Trophy System, developed by Israeli Rafael and Elta Group. This is the 220 degree radar and uses processor and onboard computers to locate and track incoming threats. Let's see how this works. Number one, radar detects and classifies incoming target. Number two, system tracks threat computes intercepts parameters and transmits alert to crew. Number three, if the threat poses danger, the countermeasure engages to neutralize it away from protected zone. This usually protects only anti-tank missiles, but it is useless against armor-piercing fin stabilize discarding Sabo. To counter those tank rounds, the Americans have a top secret depleted uranium armor. This is supposedly the location of the DU plates. Let's look at what's inside this depleted uranium composition. This is the outer layer of steel. 
The middle layer is the depleted uranium, which is 1.6 times as dense as lead. Let's move to the sides. These are the set of explosive M32 reactive armor, which are arranged in tiles. But the American engineers wanted another layer of protection. The result is these curved tiles on top of the boxy ones. When an incoming shell or rocket hits the curved tiles, it slows down and hit the reactive armor blocks with less kinetic energy. They then detonate, helping prevent the projectiles from penetrating into the vehicle and protecting the crew. But the problem is all these additions made the tank heavy and less mobile. So the solution is fitting a gas turbine engine that is light and powerful instead of a diesel engine. This is the AGT-1500 Honeywell, which not only runs on jet fuel, but has a multi-fuel design that can be powered with diesel, marine diesel, or gasoline. So, yes, this is really an advantage on the battlefield. These turbines almost work like a jet plane. Spinning the jet engine generates a lot of heat due to the enclosed structure. So to prevent the engine from overheating, two cooling units are added that sucks hot air from the turbines to reduce the heat signature as much as possible. All that power is transmitted to these running gears, which is responsible for moving the tank along with the track wheels. Let's see how this works. The driver usually enters through this hatch. Because of the small size of the tank, the driver gets the lazy chair. These are the brake pedals, and interestingly, it does not have steering like the Leopard tank, as animated in our recent video. This is how it works. The driver turns the tank by altering the speed of the right or left gears just close to the engine here. To turn to the left, the driver turns up the acceleration on the right handle. This increases the speed on the right gear and tracks, as shown in the animation here. As a result, this helps turn the tank to the left. To turn the tank to the right, the driver turns up the acceleration on the left handle. This increase in speed on the left gear and track helps turn the tank to the right. Again, as an unbiased creators, we have to point out the pros and cons of this tank. It has an improved fire control system that allows for faster and more accurate targeting. This tank has the best new thermal imaging system that provides improved night vision capability for battle management. It also has a powerful engine that allows it to reach speeds of up to 45 miles per hour and travels over rough terrain. It has enhanced protection called the Trophy Active Protection System that can intercept incoming anti-tank missiles and rockets along with the secret depleted uranium armor. Improved firepower, as the 120mm smoothbore gun could fire various shells, including the multi-purpose round and high explosive rounds. Let's also look at the cons or the disadvantages. Vulnerability. Despite its advanced armor protection, the tank is still vulnerable to certain top attacks weapons like this Russian Cornet anti-tank missile. It also cost a big $10 million, just for the tank alone, compared to the Russian T-90, which cost only $4.5 million. The Abrams is a large and heavy vehicle. This can make it difficult to transport and operate in certain environments, such as urban areas or areas with narrow roads and bridges. And the last one is the turbine engine, which generates a lot of heat, vulnerable to most infrared search and destroy missiles. We try to make every video from scratch in Blender 3D animation, so please do us a solid and subscribe to help us produce more videos like these unbiased and original content.